Fun fact, the Mr. Mobile studio is always too hot. These big studio lights kick out a lot of thermal energy. We don't control the temperature of the building AC, and opening the window... Uh, well, we, we just don't like opening the window. So when I heard there was such a thing as a personal air conditioner, well, it sounded pretty good to me. But what is it really? Let's find out in the Mr. Mobile review of Evapolar. Okay, so the whole notion of a personal air conditioner is a little absurd. In cities like Boston, air conditioning works through something called a refrigeration cycle. And um, since this diagram I drew is not very good, let's just use the one from the internet that I found. Air is passed over pipes containing a chemical refrigerant. This process also condenses water vapor, which is discarded, so the resulting air is not just cold, but dry. Evapolar does the opposite of that. It's an example of what's called an evaporative cooler, or what they used to call a swamp cooler, lol. Here's how it works. It sucks in air with a fan and passes it through a filter made of fibers soaked in water. As the air passes through the filter, it expends energy, turning some of the water into vapor, and that energy loss causes the air to cool off. It's that cooler air, along with the water vapor, that ends up on you. This isn't going to cool down a room, because it's only good for about 30 square feet, a small region that Evapolar calls a personal microclimate. And once I allowed 10 minutes for the filter to get fully soaked through, it certainly felt nice, especially when an early flash of summer sent the temperature soaring in the model shop, where I spend some weekends. I even tried using it on a ferry boat, which I'm sure didn't confuse or alarm any of my fellow passengers. You control fan speed through the dial up top, where you can also do important stuff like change the color of the lights in the water tank. Since there's no compressor or anything, there's very little noise, just the whir of the fan. You can expect to refill the reservoir a few times during the course of the day, but Evapolar doesn't draw much current, so if you can't reach a wall outlet, you can actually power it with a battery pack. What's not great about it? Well, because it's an evaporative cooler, it only works well in dry heat. Very humid environments nullify the process that makes the whole thing work. And because it's powered by water, it leaves water everywhere, unless you keep it absolutely level. So keep a rag around until you figure that out. Also, the filter needs to be changed about twice a year. Each of those is 40 bucks a pop. And finally, despite all the fancy physics that drive it and the cool blue lights and whatever, in person, it's pretty evident just how simple this plastic box is, for which $180 seems like too much to ask. That hasn't stopped thousands of units from being sold, though. And hey, a sequel is on its way, with new fancy features like smartphone control. If you're interested in claiming a version 2 of a Polar, the link to the Indiegogo campaign is down below. The usual crowdfunding risks apply, but Evapolar managed to deliver the first batch without incident, it seems. So this is probably a safe bet if you've got some extra money lying around, and you're sold on the idea of your own personal swamp cooler. If you're interested in Mr. Mobile reviewing the Evapolar 2, drop a comment below. Until next time, keep it cool. Thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.